This is a public service announcement brought to you by Maths505. The views, events, and mathematics expressed in this video are not to be taken lightly. The author of this channel is not responsible for your actions. Children should not partake in the watching of this video with laces in their shoes. Let us now begin. We are interested in the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 plus x squared over x squared times log x times log 1 plus x squared dx. And you must be thinking, how on earth did such an integral come to my notice? Well, it turns out I was actually evaluating a different integral. And that integral, well, one thing led to another and we wound up, I wound up at this side quest. But it turns out this side quest is, it, is in fact worthy of its own little main quest as well. And the integral is pretty cool. And so is the solution development. So the first thing I'd like to do is notice that this first term, that is to say 1 plus x squared over x squared, could be written out as 1 plus 1 over x squared. And that gives us sort of a basis to apply a Feynman's trick approach, that is the integral function i of alpha defined as the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 plus alpha over x squared times log x times log 1 plus x squared dx. And I know what you're thinking. This is not exactly very intuitive. I mean, why on earth place the alpha parameter over there? Because plugging in specific values of alpha does not really yield anything, anything that nicely converges to zero or something else immediately or any other nice constants. In fact, if I evaluate i at zero, I get the integral from zero to one of log x times log one plus x squared, which is itself a very nice side quest and we'll make use of that later on in the video. So I'd like to now differentiate the integral function with respect to alpha. So we have di over d alpha equal to d over d alpha integral 0 to 1, 1 plus alpha over x squared, log x, log 1 plus x squared, dx. And we'll switch up the order of the integration and differentiation operators to get the integral from 0 to 1 of the partial derivative with respect to alpha of 1 plus alpha over x squared times log x times log 1 plus x squared, dx. And this is, of course, i prime of alpha. Now, differentiating is pretty damn straightforward. We have integral 0 to 1, and we're left with only a 1 over x squared term. That is to say, we have log x over x squared times log of 1 plus x squared, which is independent of alpha, but a relatively simple integral to evaluate, and I mean relatively. So we'll recall the use of one of my favorite tricks, and that is the geometric series where we know that 1 over 1 plus z, rather, of course, we could just straight up integrate this to get the series expansion for the logarithm. We know that log of 1 plus z equals the sum over k of negative 1 to the k minus 1 times x to the k, uh, z to the k, that is, in this case, over k. And this, of course, is valid for the absolute value of z being less than 1. And this is clearly satisfied for z equal to x squared on our interval of integration. So we know that log of 1 plus x squared equals the sum over k from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the k minus 1 x to the 2k over k. Okay, cool. So we'll plug this straight into the derivative for i with respect to alpha. And this gives us the integral from 0 to 1 of log x over x squared times the sum over k of negative 1 to the k minus 1 x to the 2k over k dx. And these terms outside are independent of the index variable, so I'll take them inside. So we have integral 0 to 1 sum over k of negative 1 to the k minus 1 times log x over k times x to the 2k minus 2 dx. We'll now switch up the order of the integration and summation operators to write this as the sum over k 
of negative 1 to the k over k, where I'm just taking the terms independent of x outside the integration operator. And we have the integral of x to the 2k minus 2 terribly, sorry about that, log x dx. Okay, cool. And this seems like a pretty straightforward integration to carry out. So we have i sub k, and that is the, what shade of yellow did I use before? I think it's this one, maybe this one. I'm not sure if I remember. So i sub k, yeah, it's pretty much this one, equals the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the 2k minus 2 log x dx. And this can be solved using integration by parts as x to the 2k uh, minus 1 over 2k minus 1 times log x, limits being 0 and 1, minus 1 over 2k minus 1, integral 0 to 1. And we're, we're left with x to the 2k minus 1 times the derivative of log x, which is 1 over x. So we still have x to the 2k minus 2 over here as well. Now the first term converges to 0, and we can verify that very easily, very easily using L'Hopital's rule. And the second term is negative 1 over 2k minus 1. And on integration, we have x to the 2k minus 1, again, terribly. Sorry about that. The entire thing looked cursive. Over 2k minus 1, limits are 0 and 1. So this sorts out quite nicely to negative 1 over 2k minus 1 whole thing squared. And now, plugging this result into the expression we have for i prime of alpha we have the sum over k from 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the k minus 1 over now k times 2k minus 1 whole thing squared. And of course, we have the stray negative sign outside. And hence, we have converted our integration problem into the evaluation of a Relatively easy looking infinite series expansion. Now to evaluate the series, I'm just going to make life a bit easier for me by expanding using 2. So I have negative 2 outside and 2 over here. And I'm, not, and I'm now going for a partial fraction decomposition for 1 over 2k times 2k minus 1 squared. Which I will write as 2k minus 2k plus 1 over 2k times 2k minus 1 squared. So it's the mathematician's age-old trick of adding by 0. So expanding gives us 2k over that stuff, which means we have 1 over 2k minus 1 whole thing squared. And of course, we have a negative sign, and then 1 over 2k times 2k minus 1, which we can expand very similarly as minus 1, uh, that is to say 2k minus 2k plus 1 again. So we have 2k over 2k minus 1. And that yields 1 over 2k minus 1 whole thing squared. And I hope I don't, I don't miss out on any negative signs. Wait, 1 over 2k minus 1. There should be a negative sign over there. Uh, negatives canceling out, positive sign, 1 over 2k. Yeah, I think I haven't fumbled up anything yet, that is. Okay, cool. Now let's get back to the target or the derivative of the target integral function, that is. So plugging this result in yields i prime of alpha. In fact, I'll just zoom out a little bit from here to give myself a better visual of things. Move this up there, and now I can see exactly what i prime was. i prime is in fact terribly, sorry about that, minus 2 times quite a bit of stuff. We have the sum over k of negative 1 to the k minus 1 over 2k minus 1 squared. Then we have the sum over k using the linearity of the summation operator because the resulting sums do indeed converge. Uh, negative 1 to the k minus 1 of 2k minus 1 plus the sum over k of negative 1 to the k. I'm going to need some writing space because that just looks 
absolutely unreadable. So this is the sum over k of negative 1 to the k minus 1 over 2k. And the evaluation of these series is pretty damn easy. The first one over here is a very special constant, that is Catalan's constant g. This thing over here is actually arc tangent of 1, which can be verified by a quick lookup of the series expansion for the arc tangent function. And we know this is, in fact, pi over 4. And this little guy over here, if I just take the two outside and again, cursive, if I take the two outside, that is to say, I take the factor of one half outside, then a quick lookup of the series expansion for the logarithm, again, specifically, I'm talking about log of one plus z that we in fact used in this video shows that this is in fact equal to log two. So this implies that I prime of alpha is in fact negative two times Kaplan's constant minus pi over four plus one half of log two, which is a constant. And that is indeed quite convenient because I can now integrate this thing with respect to alpha to yield back the integral function I of alpha. And that equals negative two alpha times g minus pi over 4 plus 1 half of log 2 plus a constant of integration c. And i of 0 is in fact equal to this constant of integration. So let's evaluate that now. Now recall that this was our little side quest I mentioned in the beginning of the video. And in fact, if we expand the logarithm using its series expansion, then we see the evaluation is not exactly at all difficult. So I will leave this as an exercise to the interested viewer to show that i of 0 in fact equals 4 minus pi over 2 minus 2 times Catalan's constant minus log 2. And recall that i of 0 is in fact the constant of integration c. Now this implies that i of 1 is in fact very simple to evaluate. And again, I just need to move stuff up a bit so that I have a better visual of things. So this implies that i of 1 is in fact, now that was supposed to be negative 2 times all of that junk. So that's negative 2g plus pi over 2 minus log 2 plus our constant of integration, which is 4 minus pi over 2 minus 2g minus log 2. So immediately, immediately we see the cancellations of pi over 2s. So unfortunately, the final result does not involve pi, but it does involve four times Catalan's constant, two log 2s, and in fact, a factor of four, the number four, which makes a rare appearance on maths 505. Welcome to the channel, bro. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do drop me a follow on Instagram as well. Thank you. See you next time.